this like M out lens will transform your like M camera. And for that reason, number one, there's a huge waiting list. Number two, it's pretty expensive. But number three, it is said to be the best selling Leica M out lens in 2023. Today, I've got two Leica M out lenses for you, both premium lenses, both 35 mil, both will transform your camera, but at a different price tag. I've got the Leica Apo Summicron M 35 F2, and I tested it against the Leica Summer Lux 35 1.4 2022 version or version two, both fast-ish 35mm lenses, both like M out, both will focus closer than the standard 0.7 meters. So in theory, both will give you a much broader use from your like M out camera, assuming you're using an EVF or live view if you want to focus closer than 0.7 meters. Hey guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. Hello from Warsaw. I must say a huge thanks to the Leica Warsaw store who gave me a very warm welcome and when I just did a surprise visit and showed up on their door. They let me test the Leica Simlux new version versus the 35 Apo. I was interested, both of these are small 35mm lenses, so I'll give you a spec difference between the two different lenses. I'll show you example photos with both different lenses. I shot these lenses on a Leica, you can see me smiling already. I shot these lenses on a Leica M10R, Leica M11, Leica SL2S, all thanks to Jarek at Leica Warsaw. So huge, huge thanks. I spent half the day there. It wasn't planned. I came from the airport, thought I'd say hello and left some hours later. If you're ever in Poland, do check them out. They've got new Leica cameras, but they've also got used Leica equipment too and bags and everything else. So they even had my Wotan Craft pilot bags, which I did a rave review on recently in stock in their Leica store. So it's so great to see those on sale next to the billion bags. I can put a link below if you've not yet looked at those bags. Okay, which of these lenses do you think is gonna be the winner? And do you think the Apo is gonna be worth the extra price tag? At first glance, they look quite similar. Both similar size and they're both a similar weight. The Apo weighs 320 grams, which is just over 11 ounces. The Summer Lux weighs 338 grams, which is almost 12 ounces. So very similar. To those of you new to the Leica system, both these lenses are manual focus only, metal and glass proper lenses as you normally get for like M mount cameras. They're both range finder coupled. Both lenses have 11 aperture blades, which is two extra blades than the previous version of the Simlux, which used to have nine blades. The Apo is 10 elements in five groups. The Summer Lux is nine elements in five groups. The Apo has a close focus distance of 0.3 meters. The Summer Lux now has a close focus distance of 0.4 meters. So both better than standard 0.7 meters, but if you want to get that bit closer, the Apo is the way to go. The Apo has a 39 mil field size. The Summer Lux has a 46 mil field size. The Apo has a rectangular screw-in hood. The Summer Lux has a nice design. It's like a screw out, lock out filter hood. It's the latest version of the built in hood versions from the various like M out lenses. Well done, Leica, for improving the hood design. Talking of the close focus, one big advantage and improvement that Leica have over, say, Voigtlander lenses. You know, I'm a Voigtlander fan. It's not new for Voigtlander M out lenses to focus closer than 0.7 meters. This was the reason for me buying the 35 1.2 Nocturne lens many years ago for wedding photography because it focused to 0.5 meters. The difference between these Leica lenses and the all existing Voigtlander lenses is Voigtlander lenses, it's a continual motion between, so let's say 0.5 meters, if it will go that close through to infinity. So you don't know unless you're looking on the, the distance scale of the lens whether you've got to 0.7 meters and whether the range final patch is coupled or not coupled. What this means is if you're between say 0.5 meters and 0.7 meters on a Voigtlander lens, the, vo the focus patch is not moving. And so you, it's very easy to misfocus at close focus distances, especially if you say you're shooting film where you don't have live view or an EVF. I set the lens to 0.7 meters and then rock in the camera to get focus on these types of lenses. The brilliant advantage of both Leica lenses in this video, both Leica lenses have like a soft stop at 0.7 meters. So let's say you start at infinity, you turn, 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 you get to 0.7 meters and the turning stops briefly 
there's a bit of resistance you click almost and then you go again down to either 0.4 meters on the summer looks or 0.3 meters on the apo this means if you're a film shooter there's zero chance that you can mess up your focusing at close focus distances and if you're say a zone focus guy or people that like to do it all by feel like lenses are much better than Voigtlander lenses in this regard. So well done Leica, Voigtlander, please take note and do this to your future lenses because it makes a big difference for us rangefinder guys. Both of these Leica lenses have a nice focus tab design which means it's very easy again for say scale focusing you can have like the three positions and you just know from where your hand is where your distance is set. Not all Voigtlander lenses have lens tabs. One example is the Voigtlander Apo Lanthar 35 f2 I mentioned that again at the end of this video. Now let's look at some example photos from both the Apo and the Summer Looks. But before we do, a huge thanks to my awesome patrons. We're up to around 230 patrons, and this is my teaching platform where I teach model photography, like this stuff, and anything I learn and try to inspire you guys. We have monthly Zoom calls, and if you want to get involved, I can put some links below. Okay, onto the photos. Before we get into the geeky Lightroom comparison shots, here are some real life photos shooting close and around to the shop with both lenses. Take note of the notes on the photos because I was using the M11, M10R, SL2S, and then the SID5 Lux and the SID5 Apo. Most of these photos are edited with my Mr. Leica like M11 presets just to see how they worked on the different cameras. And you will see some raw pictures in a minute. The Apo shots are nearly all shot at f2 and the look shots are nearly all shot wide open at 1.4. I particularly like the Apo because I could just get that bit closer and that was a novelty for a, like an M out lens. Uh, there's a wine shop and a music shop opposite the, uh, the Leica store so that worked quite well. Okay on to my usual geeky testing. First centre sharpness, all these photos are raw and unedited with auto white balance from the camera. I focused on the italic writing and the apo is sharper. Here is the colours from both lenses side by side in like a non-scientific test. And now this is testing edge sharpness so we'll zoom in in a second. And the apo again is sharper if you really pixel peep but at normal viewing distance both lenses look great and at f5.6 both lenses look great. Next testing the sharpness at mid distance maybe a couple of meters. Zooming in the apo is a clear winner again. Uh, as seen on the right. Vignetting, this is with the Lux wide open and the Apo wide open. Once you st stop the Lux down to f2, the vignetting is similar. Bokeh test, the 1.4 being a faster lens will give you bigger bokeh balls, but both very nice wide open. Stop down, I don't like the cogged shape of the Summer Lux lens, but at, any, at a further distance, the Summer Lux is also great. Center sharpness up close, both lenses at f2, really, really excellent results. The fall off is really, really beautiful from both lenses. With the Simlux wide open at 1.4, at around 0.4 meters, the lens is really good and performs pretty close to the Apo, both excellent up close in the center. So what is the verdict? Which lens do you prefer of the 35 Apo and the 35 Simlux 2022 version? And which one would I recommend? From my limited testing, it depends on how you shoot. If you shoot 1.4 all the time because you love that shallow depth of field, obviously there's only one lens you can buy and that's the Summer Lux. If, however, you shoot F2, there is a really clear winner and that is the Apo because the Apo will focus at 0.3 meters instead of 0.4 meters, which doesn't sound a lot, but in reality, that's a lot. When it comes to practical everyday photography, and you want one lens that does everything. Number two, image quality is better on paper and in practice. If you stop down, both lenses are going to be the same, but you will get that APO performance from an APO lens compared to a non-APO lens. Number three, big one for me, the bokeh. If you're shooting both lenses at f2, the bokeh balls are smooth and pleasing to the eye on the APO, whereas on the summer looks, the same problem as on the previous Simulux lenses. At f2, you're going to get jaggedy bokeh balls like a cog, and it's not smooth and it's distracting, and I don't like it. So I'd only use the Simulux wide open, and then for anything else, when you're shooting at f2 or more stop down than f2, 
use the Apo lens. I love the hood design of the Apo lens, but obviously that's personal preference. I like the 39mm standardised field size of the Apo. That may suit some of you if your other lenses are already 39mm. Brought out the prices, there is quite a huge price difference between these two lenses and neither lens is cheap. The Leica Apo Summicron M costs $8,295, which is around £6,700. The Summilux new version 2022 costs $5,395, which is around $3,000 cheaper than the Apo lens. So if money is no issue, I'd go for the Apo every time. If you want super sharp and you don't mind something slightly bigger, this is the, the kicker. I would highly recommend the Voigtlander 35 f2 Apo Lanthar. Yes, it's a bigger lens, but optically it is crazy sharp. It won't go quite as close as the Leica lens. So if that's important, then you need to get the Apo lens and not the Voigtlander. But for value for money, the Voigtlander Apo Lanthar series lenses are fantastic. Thanks so much for watching. And to see the Voigtlander 35mm Apo video, click this video next.